Long before the world knew of its existence, it was already legend. The SR-71 Blackbird. It is a reconnaissance aircraft, a seeker of truth that is without peer or rival. Shrouded under a veil of mystery and intrigue, the SR-71 is the fastest, highest flying aircraft in the world. These blackbirds can literally outrace a bullet cross the length of a football field in the blink of an eye, or pass from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles in under an hour. With its twin power plants each developing more thrust than the engines on board the Queen Mary, the SR begins its climb to the edge of space, where it will reach speeds in excess of three times the speed of sound. Yet perhaps the most significant fact of all about these incredible flying machines is that they are now more than two decades old, but have lost nothing to age. Like its predecessor, the U-2, the SR-71 evolved from a need, a need to know. In the late 1950s and early 60s, gaining accurate reconnaissance data on massive foreign military buildups was imperative to the defense of the United States and its allies. The entire balance of global power was at stake. The problem was how to do it in the face of a mounting missile threat. The answer turned out to be revolutionary. Behind an almost unprecedented curtain of secrecy at the Lockheed California Company's Skunk Works, legendary aircraft designer Kelly Johnson and a small team of dedicated engineers and craftsmen began to shape aviation history. Beginning with their success with the P-38 during World War II, followed by the F-80 Shooting Star, America's first production jet fighter in the mid-40s. Then the F-104, the world's first Mach 2 fighter in the 50s, and the U-2 during the Cold War years. Johnson's team had consistently gone beyond what was then thought possible. With the creation of the Blackbird, though, even their lofty reputation would be taxed to the limit. Nearly everything that went into its construction had never been done before. Titanium forgings that had to withstand temperatures of over 600 degrees. The hydraulic system. The engines. Fuel. A life support system befitting a space traveler. Emergency escape requirements that could operate at altitudes above 100,000 feet. Everything from its tires to the top of the canopy, to even the technology from which the pieces and components were built, was invented there and then, not copied or borrowed from something previously done. Of equal significance to the creation of the aircraft itself is the fact that the entire accomplishment was conducted in just 22 months. Unprecedented then, unimaginable today. As the initial Blackbird went through final assembly at a remote test site, its existence was still only known to a few select people the public recognition it would later receive as a national asset was still years off. On April 26, 1962, 
Blackbird number one successfully completed its first flight. Quickly moving through a natural progression process, many versions of the new aircraft were tested, including one model, the YF-12, which successfully demonstrated its ability as a missile launcher. Soon, though, national security brought its brief evolution to what we have today a strategic reconnaissance aircraft, unparalleled for purpose and design. In early 1970, several years after President Lyndon Johnson first announced their existence, the Blackbirds hinted at their potential by setting seven world speed and altitude records, which still stand. Even more fascinating, perhaps, is the knowledge that those same aircraft are capable tomorrow of going out and breaking every record they now hold. In full service since 1966, today's Blackbirds are members of SAC's 9th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing at Beale Air Force Base in California. Though the times have changed, their mission has remained the same. Every time an SR-71 flies, it is an operation that involves many highly skilled people. Yet, the successful execution of a flight comes down to just two men. The reconnaissance systems officer who monitors the SR-71's vast array of advanced mission equipment, and the pilot who guides its course. They belong to an elite fraternity open to only a select few. Following a refueling stop to top off its tanks, the SR-71's twin turbo ramjet engines will produce more power than 45 diesel locomotives as it ascends to the upper reaches of the stratosphere. Cruising at speeds in excess of 2,000 miles an hour at altitudes above 80,000 feet, an SR-71 can survey 100,000 square miles every 60 minutes. It's multiple sensors gathering in millions of bits of information with each pass. Yet, for all of the SR-71's power and command of the sky, it remains an instrument of peace. It sorts the difference between what others say and what they do. And because its missions are still highly classified, the SR also remains today, over 20 years after its birth, a complete enigma, a mystery. And what many believe is the finest aircraft ever built.
SR-71A, a strategic reconnaissance aircraft. During the last few years, a new species of aircraft has been introduced and is now operational. Designed to seek information vital to the planning of future military operations, this vehicle has taken its place in the United States Air Force Strategic Air Command. Assigned to Beale Air Force Base in Northern California, where it became the 9th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing, the SR-71 is a member of a new family of aircraft known as the Lockheed Blackbirds. Introducing many new and forward steps in aircraft, engine, and equipment design, the Blackbirds brought into reality Mach 3 Plus crews, sustained high altitude, over 80,000 feet. All titanium construction, a departure from aluminum to meet the higher temperatures encountered in this new environment. Three different vehicles make up this new family of birds. The YF-12A, an interceptor. The SR-71, a reconnaissance aircraft. The SR-71B, a dual control pilot trainer. Common to each model is basic size, J-58 engine, air refueling capability, internal subsystems, speed and altitude envelope, and a crew of two. Since the mission function of each Blackbird is different, there are some variances in appearance and equipment carried. Now, one at a time, let's look at these three birds. Built for the Air Defense Command, the YF-12A Interceptor was first flown on August 7, 1963. Delivered to the Air Force for a flight test program, these aircraft were first announced by President Johnson in February 1964. They were then shown to the press at Edwards Air Force Base. proving to be the world's fastest, highest flying aircraft, the YF-12A set nine major speed and altitude records in a single day. Now, let's look at the YF's mission function. Housed in the nose is the ASG-18 radar for fire control guidance. Carried aloft internally is the AIM-47 missile for aerial launch. During the test program, launches at airborne drone targets proved to be highly effective. acquisition was demonstrated at extreme distances, above and below the launch platform, at ground level, and at high altitude, both over land and over water. While developing the weapons system, 
much valuable data was acquired in all areas of the high-speed, high-altitude spectrum. Information relative to sonic booms, air currents aloft, high-speed navigation, skin heating and cooling, engine inlet configuration, various data vital to the development of future programs. The SR-71A, the reconnaissance bird, made its first flight December 22, 1964. The first aircraft in this series was retained by Lockheed for manufacturer's flight testing. The Air Force Systems Command at Edwards Flight Test Center received the number two aircraft for operational testing. Both programs were conducted simultaneously to shorten the time span from first flight to operational use. Ready for its first flight about this time was our third family member, the trainer model, the SR-71B. Easy to identify because of its raised second cockpit and two lower fins, the SR-71B has performance capability nearly equal to the SR-71A. Pressed into service immediately, training pilots for the 9th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing, the B model began operating at Edwards during 1965 and moved to Beale in January 1966. First appearing about the time the nearby Oroville Dam was Completed, SRs have now become a familiar sight in the Northern California skies. SRs brought with them to Beale many new and different operating procedures. New to the Air Force and unique in current flight operations is the Physiological Support Division, which prepares the crews for flight. Suiting up begins with a fully pressurized inner garment. Air pressure is supplied through a network of channels leading from the main inlet fitting to the hands, legs, back, and neck. For crew member comfort, a ventilation duct system is also provided. The aluminized outer garment affords critical heat and wind blast protection. Built into this outer garment is the parachute harness, survival kit, and water flotation gear. The helmet, a fiberglass dome with anti-buffet liner, incorporates a face seal, earphones and mic, plexiglass visor, and shade. Pressurized and heat-resistant gloves and boots complete the suit. Here, a checkout is made to make sure all valves, lines, and fittings are operating properly also to check for leaks. For ground walk around, the attached portable unit ventilates the suit. It can also supply oxygen to the helmet if pre-breathing is required. Final suit checkout is accomplished at the flight line when crewmen are hooked into the aircraft system as part of the cockpit check. Assuring maximum crew protection, 
PSD personnel have a vital part in the success of every mission. The flight line at Beale was planned so that engine start and pull out could be accomplished from within the shelter area. To start the engine, 600 horsepower starter carts are used. Once the compressor reaches a given RPM, a liquid self-igniting chemical is injected into the combustion chamber and the engine is started. Designed as an all-weather aircraft, rainy days and low ceilings do not prohibit flights of the SR-71. Pre-flight checkout is completed by the launch crew near the end of the runway. With the cockpit located well forward, pilot visibility is excellent. Takeoff roll is about the same as for current Century Series fighters. After liftoff, climb to cruise altitude is quickly accomplished. In-flight refueling by KC-135 tankers provides global range. After rendezvous, the SR moves up into position. The boom operator initiates hookup. And a load of fuel is transferred. With consecutive refueling, range of the SR-71 can be extended to a point where crew endurance becomes the limiting factor. While optimized for high speed, high altitude performance, the Blackbirds designed without flaps, slots, or spoilers have retained excellent low speed handling characteristics, attesting to the soundness of the basic design. Approach and landing speeds are comparable to that of subsonic jets. With little fanfare, these amazing birds have slipped into the triple sonic age. While pioneering continuous supersonic cruising speed and many new equipment items, several thousand flights have been logged, over half at better than Mach 3. Manufacturer, the Air Force, the 9th SRW. All are proud to be operating now, an aircraft thought by many to be a decade into the future. Rain or shine, day or night, spanning oceans and continents, the Blackbirds are flying.